Spider-Man is the best. Can you use that for your opening? He's, he is the kid superhero. Sort of worldwide phenomenon. He's what we can do. Spider-Man was among the first of the younger superheroes, so I believe that's why he's resonated so much with audiences today. It's quite a profound effect on certainly children's lives, and especially now that the films and things are coming out, it's, it's, uh, he's becoming more popular and on like a bigger level, on a worldwide level. Remember, with great power comes great responsibility. The Amazing Spider-Man, the Spectacular Spider-Man, the Ultimate Spider-Man. Over the years, he has gone by many names. We have seen many interpretations and iterations. A character has seen more death and despair than most fictional characters combined, especially those who were initially created for children. But now, since his debut in Amazing Fantasy 15, 52 years ago, Peter Parker has become a worldwide name. But what we're going to find, whether it be the variety of TV shows, comic arcs or movies, is how a teenage boy from Queens who accidentally got bitten by a spider on a field trip could become the one who would save the world from sinister forces that we couldn't even imagine. This is the story of the spider. Back in 1962, a new issue of the comic book Amazing Fantasy was released with the introduction of a brand new character, Peter Parker. A teenage boy attending a high school in Queens, left with his Aunt May and Uncle Ben when he was a small boy, after his parents left for mysterious reasons. I know it started off in the 60s, and uh, it was written by the characters created by Stan Lee, and since then it's been a fairly popular, well it's probably been, I'd say, the most popular superhero. Created by the man himself, Stan Lee. Lee. Uh, creation of Stanley and Steve Ditko, uh, which is a high contentious point of controversy. Well, the way it was presented originally was that Stanley had um, had created Spider-Man, that he was solely uh, Stanley's creation. But then Steve Ditko chimed in and said, "Excuse me, I came up with this costume. I designed this character. I made the character what he is." I am the co-creator of Spider-Man. Uh, Stanley came out and said, you know what, if he believes that, then he can say that, I'll, I'll stand as co-creator. Never in a, in a million years could have imagined that he would become a world-famous figure, uh, an icon. I really like the way that Peter Parker was like a really down-to-earth teen who was going to high school. And I just thought that was really interesting to see someone, to see such a relatable character then take on this alternate persona of Spider-Man, who everyone has come to know and love. They go on the science trip and he, he gets bitten by this radioactive spider that gives him these wonderful abilities. Genetically enhanced super spiders. There's 14. One's missing. You know, I didn't originally choose a spider as the inspiration for Spider-Man. There were already characters who could fly, who could run fast, who were very strong. I was trying to think what would be different and it occurred to me if I could have a hero who could crawl on walls like an insect and stick to the ceiling. That seemed like a good idea to me. So I said, okay, what'll I call him? I could call him Insect Man, but that didn't sound dramatic enough or heroic enough. And I thought, Mosquito Man? And I went down the list and finally I got to Spider and I said, Spider Man. Ooh, that sounds dramatic. He decides to use his powers to make money, which is quite interesting. Um, you know, this, uh, this kid gets his powers, the first thing he does is try and get, uh, make some money off of it. After the passing of his uncle Ben because of Peter's indirect selfishness, he vowed to help people and to value his uncle's words. With great power comes great responsibility. But your father lived by a philosophy, a principle really. He believed that, that if you could do good things for other people, you had a moral obligation to do those things. That's what's at stake here. Not choice, responsibility. Spidey's powers include superhuman strength, the ability to cling to walls, a spider sense, perfect balance and equilibrium, as well as superhuman reflexes and agility. Although in later iterations he could shoot webs from his wrists, originally, as an academically brilliant student, he created his own web shooters that attached to his wrists and allowed him to shoot webs and swing from buildings. Through the years, Spidey has taken down a wide array of supervillains, from 
the ghastly Green Goblin, the deathly Doctor Octopus, the villainous Vulture, and the rampaging Rhino. After losing the love of his life, Gwen Stacy, when she was killed during a goblin fight in The Amazing Spider-Man number 121 in June 1973, Peter fell into a deep depression, which led him to almost killing the Green Goblin, but eventually decided not to. After her untimely death, Peter struggles with the thought of whether or not she died before the fall, or if his attempt to save her broke her neck. This was a shock in comics, because the hero didn't always have these sort of consequences on their hands. Some major events that happened in New York, seeing as a Spider-Man Peter Parker is set in New York, um, such as the uh, World well, Trade Center attacks in 2001. I think it was good in allowing a relatable superhero to the set of people that read comics because up until then you had your Bruce Wayne, you had your Clark Kent. They were big, they were successful people outside of a costume, but where Spider-Man. He became Spider-Man only in the costume. He was still like a kid. He was the kid in college. Peter Parker would have read comics. It's just like, I think people our age can relate to him more. You know, like the younger version of him, because he's in high school, he's got those problems, you know what I mean? Like everyday people as well as being Spider-Man. He's not a very successful kid. He has a, a troubled life. He's bullied by the, he's a nerd. He's a, he's, he's the geek. He's, he's the socially marginalized. There have been multiple iterations of the character. There's Ben Riley, the noir Spider-Man, 2099. There's that pig one, isn't there? I'm a pig. That's weird, that. Acting as Spider-Man in an alternate universe, a young boy called Miles Morales became the superhero after Peter Parker died. Tackling the problem of ethnicity in comic books where the majority of characters were white. Okay, don't freak out. Huh? My name is Miles Morales, and I'm Spider-Man. We're not ghosts, right? Because if I'm dead, my mom and dad are gonna kill me. But then recently, in a battle with the Green Goblin, Peter Parker fell at the hands of his, his arch nemesis, and the mantle of the wall crawler was taken up by a young boy named Miles Morales. Now, this was particularly significant because Miles Morales was the first black person to ever take on the role of Spider Man. Very recently, Spider Man changed the, the different person, became Miles Morales, which is a uh, different, different person completely. Spider-Girl is Mayday Parker, the daughter of Peter and M Mary Jane Watson. The list goes on including heroes like Spider-Man India, Spider-Woman, Spider-Punk, Superior Spider-Man, Spider-Gwen, Cyborg Spider, Fantastic Spider-Man, and many, many, many more. It just makes for one of the greatest Marvel comics that I've read. Well, he's like, he has very, very normal, average, everyday problems that everyone deals with, like girls, money troubles, School. Like when they think of superheroes, they think Spider Man, like he's up there with like Superman and Batman, do you know what I mean? Um, Spider Man as, as an icon is. He's, he's what we can do. He's what the average person can do, not literally, we're not all going to go out and get bitten by spiders, but he's, he's the idea that even from tragedy, greatness can be brought about, you know, great power, great responsibility, and all that. Um, and he's just sort of, he just sort of embodies that idea of going out and doing it. He's the American dream, his success, he's, his happiness, he's, he's a young man doing what he wants and he's, he's, he's helping people and that was the, the sort of um, the message of that. <laughs> Go out and help people if you can, which I think, you know, what well, can be translated into real world sort of situations. Hey Spider-Man. I knew you'd come back. Yeah, thanks for stepping up for me. You're the bravest kid I've ever seen. I'm gonna take care of this trick. You go take care of your mom, okay? All right, get out of here. Go. Go. You'll fight me! You'll fight me now! Uh. On behalf of the 5T 
people in New York City and real rhinos everywhere, I ask you to put your mechanized paws in the air. Never! I crash so I kill you! I destroy you! You want me to come down there so you can kill me? Yes! I'll be right there. Ah, there's no place like home.